You know, when we work hard and we earn money, we've bought a house, we want to earn more money so we can buy houses for our children. Do you agree? Yes. Why do we want to buy houses for our children? Can I tell you why? Because by right, a mu'min and a believer is supposed to think that if I facilitate that much for my child, perhaps they will be able to have more time with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Perhaps they will be able to use the time to learn the deen, to put it into practice, so I will get a reward. A lot of people whose belief is weak have stopped thinking that way. They've become so material, they don't even know the intention. Why is it that I am looking for my children to have a house before even I die, when I only manage to afford a house 30 30 years after I got my first job. Because things have changed. Everything has come upside down. We don't even know. So the son, the daughter, sometimes they have the houses, mashallah. They are still not happy. They're still lacking contentment. Some of them are lazy. They don't have jobs. They have to sell the house because of their debts. Sometimes we leave a large amount of money. They are fighting because they want to get the largest share of that wealth. We are gone. So what was your aim? What did you leave behind? What will you leave behind the day you go? That's one question. But the more important question is, what will you take with you the day you go? A lot of us say, mashallah, this guy was such a good guy. You know, he passed away. He was a millionaire. He set up all his children. He was so good. No one actually thinks about what did he take with him. A man who was wealthy and spent his wealth in the cause of Allah is the one who took it all with him. When you have spent something, it's written next to your name. The minute you've left it, it now belongs to someone else, not your name, their name. You do a deed and continue doing deeds. You know Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, subhanallah, if you take a look at how it started at the age of 40 with revelation that came in in the cave of Hira and Jibreel alayhi salatu wa salam came with the words Iqra to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. At that time what happened? He was a man who was known as a person who was an orphan at the beginning. He grew up. The people knew him as truthful and honest. He didn't have that authority and clout of Makkah from a political perspective. But look, over a period of 23 years, everything changed completely and totally. He was not only the political leader, the religious leader, the spiritual leader, the messenger, the most loved of Allah, the one who brought the goodness to the people. But it was so high that that message got through to entire mankind and to the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So much so that wallahi today we are seated here. Where was that? One might argue that okay that was prophethood. It was definitely prophethood but Allah says, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ Indeed for you in the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a beautiful example to emulate, to follow. He was an orphan. If Allah wanted, Allah didn't need to make him an orphan. But it's in order for us to aim high. Whether you are an orphan, whether you've lost your mother, your father, your child, or anyone else must not deter you from achieving your goal. You will still earn the pleasure of Allah. You can succeed in this world and the next. There are people who've succeeded, yet they have suffered much more than you and I have in this world. And they have achieved much more than you and I have, both in this world as well as the next.